Happy New Year, Taurus. Welcome to your January 2021 reading. This is for Taurus, Sun, Moon, and Rising Signs and Venus Signs as well. I'm trying to get back into the swing of things as I did before with the general reading for all my Taurus friends. And then we're going to pull Love Life Energies uh, afterwards for singles and couples. So thank you guys so, so much for all the love and support to my, you know, for your continued support to all my subscribers. And if you are new to me, welcome. I am an intuitive medium and I channel from Source as well as read tarot and oracle messages so i don't read like everyone else i do read a bit differently um and just you know all i say is to each his own right support whatever reader you want to support so be sure to hit like share comment subscribe make sure your notifications are on as i will be going live on a weekly basis and uh, I'll be uploading a little bit more often now. So thank you guys once again. We're going to start off with your January general reading for the entire month. And then we'll move into the love life. I will do my best to try to uh, timestamp down below. Also, I just finished the Capricorn and the Virgo reading. So funny because the Patience card came out. And that's what Virgo got in hers or in theirs. Um, so as I was saying... Uh, I did a little birthday bonus for Capricorn at the end of the reading. Uh, it should be timestamped, so go check out that birthday bonus. It is a spread that I normally do for my friends or in-person clients where I call it Conversations with Spirit. So if that is something that you guys would like to see in the future, maybe I can go live and do that live with you guys, you know, through uh, YouTube Live and Super Chat. Let me know in the comments down below. So let's get started. What does Taurus have to look forward to? January 2021, what is the energy for Taurus? Sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs. Let me move this a little bit further just so that I can fit all the cards. I noticed in the last couple readings they didn't. Sorry for the arm. <laughs> Reach over there. All right, so here we go. Taurus, sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs. What is the general energy for Taurus, January 2021? I hope that you're all doing well, you're staying safe, and that you had a wonderful holiday. Okay, January 2021, Taurus, sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs. Three cards, please. Make sure that you catch your other signs reading, your moon rising venus sun whatever you may be watching okay so come on i always get this with you guys you don't want to say anything you I, i'm i'm getting a visual of someone cowering of someone hiding under a rock um i don't feel like there's a very strong new year new me type energy for you guys um it's like a it's like half and half, okay? Because I feel like some of you guys are like over the bullshit from the past, over the craziness, over the instability. And then others of you are like, I don't even want to see what my possibilities are out there. So some of you may be healing from a breakup, a relationship. Others of you are finally going through the healing process so that you can offer your heart to someone. This could be someone offering their heart to you as well. But it also brings about an energy of um, optimism and purity and being open to receive love. Now, you also got the envy card. Whether this is you or someone else, if you are in a partnership, business, otherwise, maybe somebody bought their home and you're over here like living with your parents and you're looking out there like, why can't that be me? I don't know, Taurus. Why can't it be you? You know what's holding you back. Don't question the universe like it's on them. You know that there are certain things that need to happen that need to take place in order for you to get your happily ever after. At the same time, this is cause this is this is calling for you to show gratitude for what you do have. If you keep trying to uh, find happiness, joy, contentment in what you don't have, then you're reinforcing more lack. Okay, so for some of you, that is not being able to have a fulfilling and joyous and happy or passionate, whatever you're lacking in your relationship. For some of you, it's like, yeah, I got someone in my life, but they certainly don't feel like they're my soulmate or that they're the end all be all. Or you're constantly searching for qualities of someone else from your past, 
or what your current partner is partner is lacking you're you're searching for them in all the wrong places and that's why there's the card of envy it apply it to your situation because i can channel for hours and um I'm I get a, I get messages very very quickly that come in so I can't possibly I can't possibly give you guys all the entire messages so the other card this is probably going to be my last reading of the day actually because my voice is already starting to go away this is the card of cornucopia so what do you have to look forward to that is the master number 11 you also have the master number 44 here all that you've been hoping wishing and praying for there are adjacent possibilities if you felt like maybe things were never working out. Again, that card of envy is saying you're focusing on what hasn't worked out for you. You're focusing on the lack. You're focusing on the fact that what you do have didn't you didn't acquire it by the means or the ways that you wanted to you wanted a new car instead maybe you inherited a car but the point was you wanted a new car right or maybe you got a used car well it's new to you boo so come on now don't be envious of what others have because that tells the universe i am envious because i don't have what they have so guess what you will continuously be shy or shortchanged of your goal, your end game, what it is that you truly want. And for some of you, I feel like every time you have a new connection in love or something that you love, it, it's like it falls apart, it crumbles. Nothing ever seems to work out for you is what I'm hearing. You have the eight of wands there. So, you know, it's taking a step back and really healing what it is that might be holding you back, right? There it is. Exactly what I said. Four of cups, three of cups. You, you're, you're a bit envious and you're taken aback by the fact that somebody got a new beginning. Somebody got a new house, a new partner, an engagement, a marriage, a baby on the way, a new car, a new job, a promotion. I mean, this, this dude's got those three of cups. He has one they're coming to him. Does he see it? No. Why? Because he's focusing on somebody else's three cups, on somebody else's joy. And if this isn't you, Taurus, this is somebody else who's watching you celebrate, who's watching your new beginnings, okay? We got to be careful with those type of energy looming, okay? Because they, they can talk fear into our plans. They can, you know, they can sabotage or, or plant that seed of sabotage or self-sabotage. Yeah, see? They can plant that seed of self-sabotage that cause you to fail, not that they force you to fail, but it takes over your mind, right? It's replaying in your mind. You have the queen of wands there. Two of wands. King of pentacles. Ooh. Could also be because we're in Capricorn season, but king of pentacles, Capricorn was, you know, in Virgo's reading as well. Or you may be an earth sign with other earth placements like Virgo and Capricorn. And the five of swords. I'm not liking this, Taurus. I am not liking this at all. I got to admit, some of you, nine of pentacles, need to be single for a while, need to take a step back and wonder, you know, really reevaluate why you're still single, that type of energy. I'm trying to get it all on the same camera here. Hopefully you guys can see that a little bit better. As I was saying, listen, if you are hanging around or spending a lot of time with People that are focused on gossip, on, um, you know, out of pure, I just, I see like this little, and I'm going to be very blunt, Taurus. So this could be you are around these people or you are the head of these people. You know, sometimes even our closest friends or family members can be, you know, verbalizing the most toxicity, um, hate, um, and I don't mean like hate, like, you know, like I hate you type, but just like, you know, jealous, envy, hatred, like they're hating on you, right? Like what I'm feeling here is that there is a lot of communication that surrounds you, that gets you in your head, that starts you on that, you know, sense of needing to compare your path, your growth, your goals. Why am I not? 
as successful as that person. I've had those opportunities or why do they have more opportunity than me? What do they have that I don't have? And you know, sometimes like no shit on your parents, but sometimes that comes from family environment. Sometimes that comes from, you know, being raised in an environment where people have codependencies, people have, um, addictions people have uh that very pessimistic point of view of you know let's face it people we got a lot of family that talk shit about other family members right and they try to pretend like they don't know you know but that's hating that's envy that's you know why aren't you happy and supportive for their successes for their outcomes for their beauty their accomplishments the more you focus on why them and not me, the more you're building them up. And it's time to build yourself up, Taurus. And if you are not the one at the forefront or you are not the one that's going along with this, but yet you are in the mix, caught up in the mix, right? You get together with your family, sitting on the couch, t watching something on TV, and they even got something negative to say about whatever's going on on TV, even if it's a sitcom or a soap opera or whatever. It's like, oh yeah, look at that. Like, you got to stop surrounding yourself with those people. Even if they're their closest people, you have to understand that you, your aura, your energy, it absorbs that kind of negativity. And I feel like you feel like, well, if I get my shit together, if I start, you know, moving forward, new beginnings, manifesting the life I want, my family's going to talk shit about me too. Because I feel that some of you guys are almost afraid of success because your family's going to talk shit about you if you succeed. So what's more important? You're worried about people talking shit about you because you're successful, because you're in a happy partnership relationship, because you're making money, because you're getting your shit together? No. Page of Cups. You have some new ideas, some new opportunities in love, in partnership, creative new endeavors. Maybe it's time to offer that cup of love to someone in particular, but your family is just like, I know you don't think you're going to be with that person or I know you're not going to bring that person around. Listen, I do what I want. <laughs> Taurus, I feel like that's, like the kind of energy you need to empower that you need to embrace is saying, I do what I want. I feel that the people in your environment, friends, family, coworkers, whoever it may be, toxic partner. I mean, let's face it. How many of us have maybe been in line at the grocery store or wherever and there are people just Ugh, negative talking shit out loud and and you your spirit even feels it you're just like lord hurry up and get me out of this store that lady needs help that guy needs help why are they so negative mind your business taurus if you are around people that are constantly talking shit being negative that's creating a very negative and toxic environment that really clouds your judgment or your dreams I do feel that you know it's time for you to step out, take a leap of faith, and build the life that you want. I also feel that some of you are afraid of like your parentals, right? Uh, mother, father figure, husband, wife, partner, spouse, toxic friendships, relationships. You need to take a break from that type of energy. Even if it's at home, you're all at the dinner table you're all in the living room, the den, the family room. You're all, all outside on the porch, yard, talking. Oh, have you seen so-and-so? Or have you heard your cousin? Or have you heard, you know, that kind of energy? It can end with you. You don't have to listen and you don't have to absorb. But you could be the one that maybe uses a segue of some sort. Did you see... Did you see she thinks she's all good because she bought a new car. Yeah, you know, I've been thinking about a new car too. Oh, now you think you're going to be all good. Well, maybe I am. Doesn't mean I'm better than you, but I'm worthy. Or maybe you respond in kind with, like with kindness, I mean, 
with saying, I know, have you seen that car? It's a really nice car. We should have, we should go for a ride with her sometime. We should go check it out. Wouldn't you love to be inside of a nice car like that? Is, isn't she so lucky? Isn't that great? Build it up. It hurts their negative spirit to have that type of joy, optimism. But you have to do what's best for you. Even if you got haters in the midst. I feel like I have had this reading for you. And I always say that for you, Taurus. Always. I think this is what I had for you at the end of the year last year. It's time for you to level up. You may have some people that are like, oh, she thinks she's better than me. She bought a house. What am I going to buy my house? Here I am living at home with my parents. Refocus your energy to what is best for you. Get out of people, places, situations, connections that are nothing but hate on hate on hate, envious, talking shit, being negative. Virgo and Capricorn had really good readings. And I don't... I don't know how this went downhill, <laughs> but Taurus, it's time to pour some love in yourself, regardless of the negative people around you. The cornucopia is there for you. Trust me. You have so much abundance, so much opportunity coming to you. You just need to stop associating and stop absorbing the negative energy of others because that is what's holding you back. You know, it, it, it reprograms and it trains your mind to see things in pessimism instead of seeing opportunity when it's in front of you. You know, sometimes it's better to move in silent, Taurus, because what people don't know, they can't ruin, they can't destroy, they can't talk you out of, they can't make you feel bad for being successful. Okay? And it is 222. So look that number up. It's important for you, an angel number. So let's see. Love life for Taurus. Straight up singles. Wondering why you're still single. How can you stop being single? Is your love life going to change? Are you open and ready to receive love in all its form? Taurus, sun, moon, rising, and being assigned single friends. You deserve love. And engagement, hello, I like that. Okay, well, that third one wanted to come out. If you are straight up single, and maybe somebody's got you in this like negative mindset of you're not deserving, you're not worthy of love, let me just, you know, check you right now. Yeah, Spirit is saying you deserve love. You are lovable, regardless of what anybody else says to you. You're about to meet a new love that's going to be the most beautiful connection serious partnership i see it here it is a new love you are worthy of love and if you don't believe the free yourself card just flew out so you definitely have to free yourself of that negative mindset the pessimistic point of view the toxic environments that your your spirit your heart is absorbing that's replaying in your mind kick that shit to the curb let me tell you now let's see. I'll expand on the singles right now. Let's let's check out the couples. Taurus couples worth waiting for. Divine timing is that work in your love life. Heart to heart conversations. You do have the card of codependency at the bottom. So, uh for both singles and couples to all my Taurus friends, listen. Sometimes we have friends or family members around us, even partners or children that are so negative. That's all they know. They can't break free from it. Oh my God, a beautiful little hummingbird right outside my window. I just have to pause and take it in because I've had a lot of little hummingbirds coming by my, my window. You guys should have seen it on New Year's Day. Oh, I wish I had an out, a camera outside my window. Oh, Lord. Hi, little hummingbird. <laughs> so beautiful. There was like seven of them that came in, guys. I kid you not. 
they all swooped in. That was beautiful. Anyway, sorry <laughs> to distract you guys. But for some of you, hummingbird is your spirit animal, is a, a message from spirit to let you know, hey, this message is very important. The hummingbird is getting so much closer to my window and it just flew up. Okay. So that was very important for me to let you guys know if you... Um, if you notice hummingbirds as a message from spirit, that is definitely a spirit saying, listen up, listen up, sister, girlfriend, listen up, homeboy. There's an important message here for you, for the couples, heart to heart conversations that are worth waiting for. If you are in a rush to move in together for the couples, if you are in a rush to uh, buy a home, to have children, to be in a, a more serious, committed relationship with them, trust that things are working out the way they need to be, okay? Have those heart-to-heart -heart conversations. Make sure that the two of you are on the same page, you know? And and I feel like somebody here might be living with their parents or, you know, whether you or them. Remember, it's a general reading. Energies can be reversed. Roles can be reversed. But they may be dependent on, maybe their parent is dependent on them. This can also be somebody who is codependent on love loving relationships back and forth non-stop i will continue on the couples in just a minute sorry i had to refocus there a little hummingbird came back so let's move on let's go back to the single sorry guys i just you know, when spirit comes in like that, it comes in really, really strongly for me. I literally feel like this intense energy, very intense energy. Okay, the lovers and the hermit card. So if you have other earth in your chart, Tor uh, Virgo or Capricorn, check out their readings. Uh, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, earth had a lot of earth within those two readings, okay? Um, we are in Capricorn season though, so it could be that this may be unfolding for you in Capricorn season. I also have to remind you, because this is the card of Gemini, to be careful when it comes to Mercury retrograde, which I believe is uh, end of January, but you know, we always have that little shadow phase period that can affect us, okay, two weeks before. So I would say, you know, be careful with contracts, electronics, back up your shit, basically, right? Um, communicate clearly, say what you got to say, say what you mean, mean what you say. Uh, if I talk really fast, sorry, I just really felt that surge of energy from spirit when I'm channeling a lot and I'm channeling really quickly and I get tired and my voice starts going away because I've said a lot, I'm communicating a lot. Um, that's why you'll notice that my voice kind of goes out a little bit and then I may cough. Uh, so just forgive me. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to take it all in. And communicate the energy to you. Okay. Definitely my single Taurus friends. Oh my God. Time to leave the old and welcome the new. When you close the door to the new and you start on your own healing journey, you open yourself up to the possibilities. And it's been the same energy for both uh, Capricorn and Virgo. So I will link the readings at the end of this reading so that you can check those out or, you know, go to my channel to look for those uh, readings. So yeah, um, Taurus singles, hello. If you were wondering whether or not you were ever going to be in a commitment, if you were ever going to find someone, maybe the last person you were with really hurt you, really affected you. Know that you deserve love. Spirit is reinforcing that message, especially with that little hummingbird. You guys look up the spiritual meaning of a hummingbird when they pop in. I have had those little hummingbirds coming around almost every single day. I've spotted at least one to two. But I'm telling you, on New Year's Day, holy cow surge of energy it was amazing all right so here we go the lover's card hermit six of cups four of pentacles now along with that along with that uh you deserve love new love and engagement yes you are about to meet or you have just recently met 
someone new. This can also be someone that has only been a friend and then you realize you have more more than just a friendship connection. This is someone that you have a spiritual bond with, a, you know, an attraction to, an affinity to. The two of you are on the same, you know, vibing the same. You're on the same level. Um, there is some, you know, old heartache and uh, inner turmoil that may still be like lingering within you. That's, that's maybe, how can I say this? Diplomatically anyway. Um, there's some old heartache, energy, heartbreak from the past that this person may know of or that the new person can pick up on that you haven't fully released it because I'm starting to feel that sense of surge in my heart. So I can definitely feel it. That is you self-sabotaging. That is you uh, hiding behind the pain, pretending like you're not worthy, you're not deserving, and all you're really doing is carrying the weight of the world on you that affects you and affects your partnerships and relationships. Because if you think that they cannot feel that you're still holding on to past hurt, past pain, you're not fully over it, you're not healed, or you're not even embarking on that healing, you know, journey to try to free yourself, to be free and clear of what that person did to you of what, you know, you've been, because somebody here um, endured some abusive behavior, whether from childhood or in an old partnership, somebody making you feel like crap. Now, I feel that you already know that this is something that you should be embarking on. I feel that you will be meeting your soulmate. Uh, you've been busy just working on your money, trying to hold on to that, doing the best that you can for yourself. Uh, I also feel like you're saving up your own little, like, uh, a rainy day fund um, to be able to create the life of abundance, of luxury, of fulfillment, of joy, of love all around you so that you can feel more lighthearted, so you can feel love. This new love, honey, let me tell you, two of cups and the lovers and you have the new love and the engagement. Let's just say spirit here is letting you know right off the bat soul mate beautiful energy twin flame the end all be all earth signs are really really getting this strong connection and i believe your 2021 readings also had that connection of if you if your love life has been a little stagnant lately it's about to pick up. It is absolutely about to pick up. You will be experiencing more love in your life than you ever have before. And Taurus, I cannot reinforce this enough. The more you love yourself and you heal yourself within and let go of the, you know, energy of the last person that hurt you, energy of the whoever it was that abandoned you, because it could have been a parental thing, it could have been a family thing, could have been an ex, it could have been a child that just like refuses to have a relationship with you, right? What you feel emotionally as an emotional pain, hurt that's really, really strong, you are... Even if you're not speaking of it, your spirit still shows that wound. You really have to do everything you possibly can to heal those wounds. You have the star here. The two of cups, the lovers, the hermit. I mean, just this row right here. The hermit, two of cups, and, and the star card means I know I want my beautiful commitment, new love, engagement, partnership, soulmate, twin flame, whatever it is that you're calling out for, you know, for the universe to bring into you. They're saying, come on now. You have the answers within. You know, we got you. You know, we're bringing somebody to you, but it starts with you and healing. And once you take back control of your life and bring in, bring about that passionate side of you that has been dimmed for so long, when you work on you, and you let go of the pain, you let go of the heartache, you drop those 10 wands. For some of you, it's cutting that snake out because they've got you wrapped around 
by the leg, like a ball and chain. They're not letting you go. You know who they are. You know what I'm talking about. It could be addictions. It could be a toxic ex that keeps, re you know, coming back in because every time you start healing and you start feeling better and they let go that they feel like, like, listen, whether you believe it or not, when you start letting go energetically of that old partner, when you start healing and feeling better, when you can go days, weeks, months of not thinking of that dusty ass ex that hurt you, they feel it. They feel you releasing detaching energetically and just when you're feeling good skipping away enjoying the sun absorbing all the wonder of the world stop and smell the roses enjoying that little hummingbird sign who comes back in to remind you that they were the best for you that they were your end all be all you know that's not true because if it was it you'd be with that person they hold you back what do they hold you back from? Ten of cups. Emotional fulfillment. That as much as you wanted them to be the end all be all for you, you know they're not. You've got new love coming in. You have to heal the bullshit from the past in order to receive that new love that's coming in for you. Union. Going out, having a good time. Meeting somebody. I mean, you shouldn't be going out parting it up or anything like that. But you definitely have somebody coming in. And look, Knight of Pentacles and Three of Cups. That is you slowly but surely. Slowly but surely because you are the slowest knight in, in the deck for me. Slowly but surely moving out of the funk and into the happiness. Okay? You just have to have faith trust and believe that spirit has your back here that spirit wants you to heal and be happy and enjoy all the goodness and the love that the universe has to offer and if me being that optimistic for you is too much ask yourself why ask yourself why that bothers you why my optimism why that that joy that healing that happiness she's too happy she's too peppy why does it bother you have you been conditioned around pe people around you to believe that that's not possible? That you have no right to joy, peace, love, happiness? Where is that wound coming from, Taurus? Get to the core of it. Heal it. So you too can be as, you know, happy, joyous, optimistic about everything the world has to offer you. Now, couples worth waiting for and have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation so again for the couples that are maybe you know one partner is trying to move faster than the other one partner wants to hurry up and buy a house hurry up and move in together hurry up and have children or uh, you know they better put a ring on it either you're hearing that taurus males or you know or it doesn't have to be males females uh no pronouns here um but you know i, I feel like one partner is like i'm waiting for that ring We've been together for a long ass time. Or uh, can we at least buy a house together? Can we at least move in together? Someone is really, really comfortable in their situation here. Um, I feel that you both need to have a serious conversation and be on the same page. And either realize that they are your partner for life. You have to have a little bit of patience and that the divine is working behind the scenes to get you to, to the place that you both need to be in terms of growth, emotional, spiritually, physically, financially, to get to your happily ever after. Or maybe you realize that this isn't the person for you and that you need to get clear about what you want so that new love can come in. And when I said that, the Ace of Cups and the Knight of Swords peaked out. So that could be a message for some of you. So let's clarify for the Taurus couples. <laughs> I don't like to take this many, but I am going to show them to you because Lovers, Eight of Swords. Four of Pentacles, Five of Cups, and the Queen of Swords. So um, you're unhappy at the progress of this connection, of this relationship, causing a lot of, you know, Riffs, arguments. And yet you keep yourself in this connection hoping that it's going to change. 
All right, let's clarify this, please. Ten of Wands. Six of Cups. Hierophant, that's your card, with the Page of Pentacles. One more. Seven of Cups. The Star card. Clearly, you guys have a lot of healing here that needs to take place. And as you go on that healing journey, you will find hope, peace, tranquility, partnership. Quite a few majors here. So this is a life-changing moment for some of you. But you're stuck in lack mentality. And wondering where your happily ever after is. And trying to find your happily ever after in your current partner. I'm not saying it's not them. They're just not where you want to be. And maybe they're just not ready just yet. And you need to be okay with that. And either be willing to wait for them. Or you need to be okay with walking away. It's really up to you. Sorry, you guys, if my voice starts going away. And you have the Queen of Pentacles, Seven of Pentacles at the bottom, Page of Cups. Okay, so here it is. You know that this conversation has to happen. However, Five of Swords, you're afraid of arguments. You're afraid of separations, breakups. You're afraid of the conversation not really going down the path that you're hoping it will. Because you want end-all, be-all. Marriage, partnership, relationship. For some of you, you are married, but the marriage isn't as fulfilling as it was when the two of you were just dating or just, you know, had just moved in together. It's almost as though the title of marriage or that marriage license certificate just kind of made things a little too scary for some of you. Um, I do feel like there is somebody here who maybe is married or was recently engaged married that's still looking at all their options. Like, did I make the right choice? Um, I feel like somebody here is stuck in there. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. What if I would have stayed single? What if we just would have never gotten married? What if I would have called that one person back? Maybe I could have been married to them. Maybe you see that person buying a house with their current partner and you're just like, what? That could have been me. Listen, divine timing is at play here. Find the lesson in the situation. Why are things delayed for you? Are they, Taurus, are they delayed for you in reality? Like, are they, do you feel that they are delayed because you feel you should have already done it? Because you've reached a certain age? Because you've been with someone for X amount of years? Because that's the mentality that's been instilled in you? And in case you don't hear my little owl hoo-hooing out there definitely some spirit guides around that want to reinforce this message empress some of you baby mamas are dealing with baby mamas right trying to figure out how to make it work with them or like i said somebody here wants children the other person is like nah and I feel that you are afraid that when you have that conversation about children, that it's going to be the end all be all. Like, for example, you want children, they don't. Maybe they can't have any. Maybe they, they had trouble conceiving in the past. Maybe they already have kids and they don't want any more. Now, if you really want kids, does it make sense to be with someone who doesn't? But I love him. I love her. I know. How badly do you want a child? Are they a deal breaker with anybody? With anybody. If you were single right now, right this second, the person you're with didn't exist and you met someone and they said, I don't want any more kids. I already got five. Is that your deal breaker? end all be all you hardly know this person so what's holding what's holding you back right ace of cups you got a lot of love for this person this person has a lot of love for you but that is not something that they want to offer you or maybe they want children but just not with you and that's a hard pill to swallow 
For some of you, you have children and this person that you're with is not accepting of your children. So please be careful with that. You don't ever want your children to go through the same negative mindset that you may have been exposed to growing up. Give your, give your children what you felt you needed growing up. Perhaps what you lacked. What you know that if you would have had this, more of this, more of that. And I'm not talking about money and video games and material things. Because I know Taurus. We like the luxury. We like the good life. We like nice things. We like to surround ourselves with nice things, aesthetically pleasing. I'm going to hook up my kid with a nice room type thing, right? And maybe you had it all growing up like that. Were your parents present? Did you feel a bond, a connection with them? Did you have the support that you needed? You knew you could talk to them at any time, any place, anywhere about anything. I'm just feeling so many different connections here and messages for you Tauruses that it's time you get real with yourself about how you move forward from here. Rapid changes coming forward. So I would suggest <laughs> your heart-to-heart -heart conversations. I would encourage them to happen before Mercury retrograde, before any little comment thing said turns into a tower moment, whether for you or them or your partner or your relationship, whatever. Things are moving forward for you in a beautiful way. Sometimes you have to find the beauty in the collapse, in destruction, because what doesn't kill you make you stronger? Yes. But are you putting yourself through harsh situations that you don't need to be a part of? That frankly, spirit is going to continuously show you and offer you the same lesson over and over again, because they're like trying to knock it, knock some sense into you, right, Taurus? I do not want to end it on this note. Let's um, let's get a little more clarifiers. Here we go. I know I did not pull any clarifiers for the singles, and that's all right. It's a lot more complicated for my couples. Wow, and right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Do I have you in thought? What I said maybe triggered something for you to think about let's do this Sibila. let me have a card for the ten of wands tell me more about the ten of wands please because there is a heaviness here and and it stems from fear of being afraid to have that conversation of being afraid to face the truth about a connection are you lovers who did i just say this to Virgo, I think. Are you lovers or are you partners? Is this person here only for the hookup and you're trying to make it more? Or are you waiting for somebody to come to you with that type of love energy that they cannot get enough of you? And somehow you don't you don't feel that coming from your current connection. It weighs heavily on you because Maybe you're not physically, emotionally, spiritually, sexually, I don't know, whatever you guys need, <laughs> fulfilled. Yeah, you're hoping, wishing, and praying for this type of love to come in. Worth waiting for. It's time to have a real heart-to-heart -heart with yourself, though, okay? If you're not happy in the connection you're in... You could try and paint it all kinds of different colors, but sometimes you can't fit, you know, square peg, round hole type thing, right? Well, maybe that was a little too graphic, but you know what I mean. Tell me about the Seven of Cups. Yeah, and look at that. No coincidence, right? A few different options that he's contemplating. Union, money, victory, career, success. Can I have all of them or do I only pick one? Are they all good for me or none? Maybe I should just stay in daydreamy mode because it's clear that I don't have it together. 
that I need to get it together. You are very much in that thought mentality. Let me have uh, cards for the tower. End all, be all. Some of you, like I said, are going through a divorce, a separation. Um, it can be an end to an engagement. It can also be an end of not being engaged because you finally have that heart to heart conversation and they say, dang, like I was going to propose to you, but you know, there are certain things that need to end a certain chapter that needs to end in order for union to happen. You may also be dealing with someone who's a bit arrogant, FYI, or that could be you. My little owl outside is hoo-hooing a lot. Okay. Let's give our Taurus couples some hope, change, optimism. What is that wheel of fortune? The lovers, the hierophant, three huge major arcanas, and the high priestess, and the magician, and the empress, and you got the tower. Now, listen. I'm not worried of that tower when I have a magician, the high priestess, one, two, three, and the empress, along with the hierophant, commitment, higher level of commitment. Some of you, it's counseling. Some of you, it's therapy, couples counseling to try to make this work. You have the star card as well, major majors. The death card, the lovers, holy cow. You have more majors than anything. But tell me more. I feel like this is a revamp of your relationship or you finally have the courage to leave a relationship that is not for your highest good in order for you to be single for some time and wait for the right person or wait to be able to be in a better place to meet the right person. Uh, give me some optimism for my Taurus couple, something to look forward to. Woo! The thoughts came out again. I'm just going to take it. I'm going to show you these, but I'm going to put them back because it's the main female, mature man, and a pathway. I feel that for some of you may have inherited uh, a specific uh, money, business, partnership. This may also be like a father, father figure, or maybe you're with an older man. Who you, meet, you may meet an older man that opens up your life to the possibility is so much more okay these just flew out so yeah again some of you may have an inheritance that's coming to you you don't know yet you don't see it coming well maybe no you kind of do um others of you i feel that somebody does come in and helps you out to get you out of this cycle Yeah, you may, some of you may be going through divorce separation. This can also be probate. So don't, don't think that you're, it's automatic divorce. This can also be probate money coming towards you. Uh, you may also need to travel to take care of some legal issues is what I heard. Okay. So what does this wheel of fortune catapult Taurus couples to? The end of despair. If if you have that heart-to-heart -heart conversation and you realize this relationship is dead in the water, as painful as that may be to accept, to say out loud, to think, to realize, to go through, to process, it really is an end to despair. Because maybe you've been in a relationship that brings about a lot of confusion, a lot of uncertainty, but if you're single and you walk away from that, you have an opportunity to be able to count on yourself and give yourself the life that you want. For others of you, unfortunately, that wheel of fortune is bringing in a death in the family. Yeah. 
whether partner, spouse, family member. Some of you feel very, 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 very stuck in a specific situation. Especially with children where you're experiencing, um, you know, child support, alimony, um, custody issues. Others of you may be expecting very, very soon. This month is going to be very, <laughs> you're going to come across some very life altering um, news changes. Within the family, within the partnership, it's very different for so many of you. Some of you are going through divorce, through separation, loss of a parent, family member, inheritance, uh, child support, custody, um, child abandonment. This can also be that you're having a hard time in your partnership because of your childhood abandonment issues. Um, Definitely seek counseling therapy because you have so many major arcanas here. I just, I want to hug you, Taurus, because this is like life altering trajectory that this is coming in for you to heal. Okay, let's move these out of the way so you can see. Okay, when you have... A bunch of major arcanas they are the reinforcing message here why because the minor arcana is the supportive message right the hierophant the star card the wheel of fortune the high priestess the magician the empress the lovers the tower card and death that is the main story for you this month. Hierophant, speaking of, you know, uh, specific uh, standards, thought, thought systems, traditional relationships, partnerships, love, that needs to heal. When you go through that healing process, the wheel of fortune catapults you, connects you to source, to spirit, in order for you to manifest the life that you want. Whether that's your happily ever after, the right partnership for you, uh, you know, laying down roots, growing your family, your relationship. For some of you, you realize that the partner you've spent a lot of time with uh, trying to grow is really not the end all be all and that catapults you into a new direction. So Taurus, Taurus couples, good luck this month. I've gone on way too long. It's almost going to be an hour. And I tend to do that. So sorry, this is a really long reading. I hope that this resonated with you. Please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I really want to pull more cards, but I don't want to push it on the hour. So <laughs> love you guys so, so much. Happy New Year. Wishing you so much love and all the best and healing for you Taurus friends, okay? Have a wonderful January 2021. Take care. Bye.